This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight. How about them apples, huh? Or how about them big, big apples? How's that? It's better. Okay. Anyway, hi. How are you? What's happening? Oh, man. Ah, coffee. Ah. I, um, uh, hmm. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, I've, I've, I've just tired just tired i don't know i think it's i don't know then eh, yeah, whatever i'm always tired you know when i start doing this i should take a couple of weeks off i'm really thinking of it i was i was not going to do the show this week just because uh, i'm sick and tired of doing it uh, and not getting a kind of decent sized audience that could, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, can be part of the uh, uh, the program. Uh, it 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 causes it causes me a great deal of grief to tell you the damn truth. Um, and uh, I look at the numbers at the end of the day, and they're not that good. Okay, they're not that good. So anyway, what the hell? Anyway, look, uh, it's uh, time to go over to uh, our our friend. Uh, Whoops, what is that? Wait a minute, uh, that, that isn't the right. Oh, that's, that's because, right. I, because I brought the wrong thing. Oh. You know, I was doing so perfectly tonight without, what is that? Uh, I, I figured uh, I'd get Bob Rubin on the show. Why? <laughs> you know, we were talking about him yesterday. and uh, I don't know, so he posted something and made everybody think he was going to be on the Tonight Show last night. Yeah. And he wasn't. You yeah. So. How do I get this off? Well, I don't know. You got it on there. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I'll, I'll... Go over to your... Go over to your... Um, uh, uh, and, uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Preferences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, background. Yeah, I don't know why you put that Did picture up there out? in the first place. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. That, that's pleasant. Yeah. By the way, that's pronounced Ghirardelli, folks, just in case you don't know. I can't eat the chocolate anyway. It drives up my sugar. It really so, drives uh, up you, your sugar? Yeah, you, you were talking about how you were feeling. Mm -hmm. You were tired. Mm -hmm. well, that's enough. And so, uh, you know, uh, your friend uh, Alex Jones. My friend Alex <laughs> Jones? How, well, how, how is he my friend? I don't even know the guy. Well, you both have the same first name. Oh God! No, that's why I'm thinking. Of, that's why I'm thinking of changing it. Just calling yeah. this what it should be—the Ben Schwarzman show. Yeah, well, maybe you'll get more uh, more listeners. Since... I doubt it. Either that, or they'll say, "Hey, there's a new guy doing a podcast. Let's <laughs> listen to him." Oh, it's yeah. him again. Yeah, Isn't exactly. he ever going to give up? Why don't you put yourself in the center of the picture? Uh, it's not the easiest thing for me to do until. My new uh, thing comes. I, I also have to what move new thing? My EZO. Uh, 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 EZO? What's an EZO? Uh, it's a. Uh, it's not, uh, what, what, you're not just it. you're just screwing up the whole opening of the show while we wait for you to get a picture. <laughs> All right. Uh, the reason uh, the the camera's not in the right spot, and I'm too lazy to do anything with it until. My new monitor comes. Where's your camera? Where do you have uh, it? It's on one of those sticks. Uh, what, what's the name of that? Uh, Can't you just put it on top have? of your monitor? Well, I lost the uh, I lost the base that holds it on the monitor. So I tried to take the base off from the camera that I have at the store, and it doesn't come off. So. Uh, why don't you take the camera from the store and replace it with the one that's on your on your? Machine? Oh, it's a real piece of shit that doesn't like to work on a Mac. Oh boy. So you know, well, we'll just sit here and wait until you can get your picture right, 
Okay, well, this is close. And, and what did you say you ordered now that's going to make it all better? Well, it's it's a new monitor, and uh, with that new monitor, oh. I'll get a new camera. Why'd you and, get Why'd you get a new monitor? Um, I needed to buy a spectrometer. No, you didn't. You know? No, you didn't need to. Well, no, uh, you, you didn't yes, need I to for no, you, when I print. No, you didn't need to. Well, I don't need to with an ISO. Have you been printing all these years? Have you been printing all these years without a spectrometer? No, I had a spectrometer. I got rid of it. Oh, and now, when uh, I got, I don't like. See, uh, I, I don't uh, feel ba so bad about my purchase now. Yeah, see this uh, right here. That's he doesn't uh, he doesn't care what my purchase was. No, what what did you buy? Something you can't lay your hands on, even oh, if you yeah. tried. Even if you tried, it would take a, you at a, least a, a good looking girl. <laughs> no, it took me about six to eight months to be able to get into the top of the line to the head of the class to get yeah. offered the ability to buy it. Wow. I was the I was the part of the class that made the top half possible, the bottom half. He's but, not even uh, listening to me. He doesn't care. He yeah. Okay. Care. So now, I tell you, I'm not going to tell you what I bought. Okay. Then, tell then don't tell me. Yeah. You know, you you you're crying that uh, you got no money. You're on a fixed income, and uh, I'm not crying that I'm I don't have any money and that I'm on a fixed income. I have my savings and they're fairly substantial. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, mine. Uh, today, today I'm looking at my uh, debit card activity mm -hmm. on my checking account, and there was two charges for two dollars each yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was to some crazy company in Pleasant Hill, California. Mm -hmm. And so I looked up the company, and they're a company that does uh, washing machine charges. So I said, "No, nah, this, this something's wrong here." And so I called the uh, the bank and I closed down the uh, debit card mm -hmm. because I realized, you know, when they charge $2, they're, they're just testing your card. And they did it twice in a row. Oh, they did. No, they do. Here's what they do. For instance, I use, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 the, 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 PayPal? No, no. For d getting deliveries, buying groceries and stuff. Instacart. Yeah. And every time I use Instacart, let's say I'm char I'm buying two hundred fifty dollars worth of stuff at Costco. Right. Upon ordering it and having them go out and do it, they immediately charge three hundred dollars to my credit card. Hmm. And then when the whole total comes uh, comes out, they then give me credit for that. So well, I didn't a lot of these places do do a charge to see if you're thing will go through yeah well i i was uh yesterday well did you do 11. any business with these people no never uh so uh w yesterday i was in pleasant hill at the in out burger and mm -hmm. i bought a couple of protein style burgers and brought them home mm -hmm. uh now that was the by only the way by the way they should not be allowed to be called burgers <laughs> why is that the, the idea of a veggie burger well, what is it no, about no, burgers we burger. like we like but, meat. Oh, oh, meat. They're, yes, meat. The, these are meat burgers without the bun, and oh. they wrap it in lettuce, and so they call it protein style. You, you got to know the in and out jargon. You know all these different places, especially in and out. Have, I would, have I wouldn't go to in and out anyway. They're a big right wing organization. So. Well, yeah. Well, I I try to go to them and Chick Fil A, although the lines are too long at Chick Fil A, and I always give up on them. Uh, you know, if you pull into the parking lot, uh, the lines go for for a half a mile, it seems. Some so people, they, uh, these right wing things in a left wing state must not do very well. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, no. So any, anyway, these charges uh, come back to a one starred Yelp company uh, that claims people are ripping them off but what they do is uh washing machines now I, what do you I, mean they do washing machines so if you live in a uh in, in a building that has uh multiple washing machines for their tenants mm -hmm. uh they now take credit cards and this company handles the billing for those credit cards now this is just the kind of company that is ripe for uh, doing credit card fraud.
mm-hmm. because they have so many transactions. I mean, they're uh, ripe for doing the fraud or somebody to do the fraud upon them. I think somebody's doing the fraud upon me and using them as the vehicle to, uh, to, to run the charges. So they can do their wash? Uh, no, so they can rip, rip me off. Hmm. Uh, you know, other people, it's to do the wash. But uh, I think they're just using their uh, credit card terminal or their processing ability to, uh, to, to rip me off. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, that was, uh, you know, one of the things I had to do today. Uh, Boy, it's an see- interesting day, boy. And uh, let's see here. Oh, we got only 23 people. Wow. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look. So I at- signed in 23. Four yeah. times, though. How did, how did 20, that happen? 23 people are watching right now. Yeah. Well, and thank you very much to those 23 people for watching and to those who aren't. Yeah. I mean, that's, so, why, that's why I don't want to do this anymore. Who am I? Well, you know, I, I was used to playing, you know, in the morning, playing to 30,000 people. Yeah. And what's this all about? I'm doing this for, like, 23 people? Well, it's 23 now, and the way... I in, got better it, things to do. I got I, I, I have to use my new uh, thing I bought. Uh, oh, the thing. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about... Uh, 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 what's his name? Yay West, or what's, what's he call himself? Canine West? Uh, the, the, uh, the rapper, uh, uh, guy who makes clothes? Yay Z or something. Yay. Yay West. Yeah. Or, well, a- anyway, I guess he's getting hit with all these uh, anti-Semitic uh, claims. And, no, it's uh, not anti-Semitic. Well, he... I he's, mean, he he has been getting somewhat anti-Semitic, but he, basically yeah. what they went after him for was he came out with a T-shirt that says, White Lives Matter, and he's wearing yeah. it everywhere. And <laughs> well, as you know, he was married to Kim Kardashian. Right. Since separated, and I think they're divorced now. And he went to a basketball game for their kid at their at his grade school or high school, I don't know where, and uh, wearing that shirt, and Kim wouldn't even sit next to him. Wouldn't even well, have anything to do with him. Kim, Kim lost a lot of weight on the same drug that I'm on. Uh, I, I guess not only Kim, but her, also her sister. They, they've lost a tremendous amount of weight. And she was asked, uh, what is it? And, and it's, a, it's a drug that um, I take Victosa for diabetes. It's an injection. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess they're taking much greater uh, amounts of it. Oh, wonderful. And there's one called uh, Ozempic and, and another one called Wigovi. And uh, it, it runs about $850 a, a month for 30 days worth of injections. And she said that that's how she lost the weight, that taking that drug makes her feel like she doesn't need to eat or want to eat. So uh, I got a feeling Kim Kardashian's going to be a short, a short timer if she keeps doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know that she's that fat. No, I didn't yeah. think she was fat, but she, the, the, she, the she's, look, she's got she, an ass on her that goes from here to Broadway, but, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know if she still has that. Do you think that? Uh, oh she yeah, no, re- she still has it. She's yeah. never going to get rid of that. No. Oh, she wasn't wearing a fat suit or something no, like no, that. No, yes. no, no. Yeah. Yeah, you want to wear a fat suit to make yourself look more attractive. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, so anyway, she's doing the Ozempic, and uh, uh, Canine West is uh, uh, Kanye. 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 Canine. Um, uh, so, you know, he's, uh, he's getting some bad press. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, I also wanted tonight, if you want to talk about it, uh, these cyber attacks that, uh, the Russians are doing and they shut down three of our airports, Hartsfield in Atlanta, LA and, uh, LaGuardia. I haven't heard about this. No, it was yesterday. I know. Uh, Maybe I just don't care. Well, that's a possibility. You know, the Russians, the Russians are are uh, literally uh, hacking us continually. Yes. And uh, you know, so I mean, it's not unusual. 
but what the problem is is uh, just like they're testing my uh, my debit card with two dollar charges mm -hmm. the russian hackers by being able to uh shut down airports and uh, uh shut down uh communications and websites that the airports use they'll eventually be able to shut down bank accounts uh city services uh there there's a city in long island they cannot process because they were hacked. Uh, they cannot process any sales of homes uh, because the uh, so uh, people can't do uh, searches, find out that there aren't liens on on homes, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's stopping uh, sales. Eventually, if you can't use a credit card because uh, the internet is down due to hackers, it's going to stop commerce. Uh, you know, you know, how many things do you pay for in cash? Uh, you know, do you go out and do you buy stuff uh, with cash? Most of the time, I never use cash. Minnesota. Never use you cash. Ne never. Me either. Never. I mean, I I, have I, I took out a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, put it in my pocket in cash, so I have it with me. I think I still have a hundred and sixty, and this is two months later. Yeah. You know, if, you know, if uh, if they shut down ATMs and things like that, mm -hmm. that's going to be the only way you're going to be able to buy stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if, if there's a hack to a ATMs, it probably won't last more than a couple of days. But those are the couple of days that, you know, you may need to uh, make a purchase and we won't be able to do it because of hackers. And I believe that that's why they were able to get my uh, compromise my debit card yeah yeah big big compromise well i know it's only two dollars it's only two dollars and they were testing it to see if it works now somebody obviously was using your name or something like that let's see if a larger charge comes on there well uh i've already shut it down well but rather than do that why don't you call the people and say what's going on here and where did you get my name uh, I don't think they had anything to do with it. I think that somebody is using that uh, site to do their uh, do their transactions. But you could, they're a business, aren't they? Yeah. Then you and, call them and you ask them about this. Well, their business is in Union City, and this said Pleasant Well, Hill. I understand, I understand phone lines go all the way down to Union City. Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah. Well, I'll call them tomorrow. But I mean, I, I would I, call them and just say, what's going on here, just so you know. I mean, why should you have to go through the whole process of killing your card and getting a new card and having to then change all the stuff online that you pay with that like you're going to have to do, yeah. right? Why go oh, through yeah. all of that if you could just very simply call them and say, what the hell is this all about? I never did any business with you people. Yeah, well, I don't think that they're the ones that are perpetrating the... Well, uh, then thing. let them tell you that, but maybe it's something they can control. Well, and they can, they and you can put them on, on notice that if anybody tries to do anything on your card, you are not going to pay it. Well, uh, I understand, but I don't think that they're the ones... I think their account is compromised as well. And that, uh, you know, people redirect... Uh, or establish accounts that look real, but really aren't. All I'm saying is you're not doing anything about it. All you're doing is you're killing your card, which oh, is a, yeah. it, it, it puts a burden upon you, and you shouldn't have to have that burden. A big burden. No, but you, you know, I, yeah, I, but, I look, yeah. I look tonight on uh, you know all the automatic charges I have on that, and it's uh, uh, it, it's astounding. Uh, and, but I'm switching to another bank anyway, so it's a good time. You know what I do for paying most of my bills? You know, paying for, like, various things and so on and so forth? PayPal. I, th I think that might be a PayPal smart PayPal, because then they can't, if they screw, screw, screw with you via PayPal, PayPal will make good on it. Yeah. They'll look into it. They'll, I've had it happen. I had some guy who was in... Uh, I don't know, Korea or something, trying to charge mm. stuff on my credit card. And um, I got a hold of PayPal, and I, it was on, through PayPal. And I said, this is not acceptable. I didn't make this charge, and why would I? It's a company in South Korea that's selling, like, video games. 
which, you know, I don't usually buy online, except through maybe Amazon or somebody like that. Yeah. And they so they went and they looked into it and they said they credited it all to my account. It was only it was only something like eighty six bucks, but still, if, I, if the eighty six bucks had been it charged, could have been more. then they could have then there be more after oh, that. You know, um, Karnak says you got a PlayStation Six. No. Uh, yes, Karnak says you got a new game. No. No. Okay. So what did you get? I didn't get a PlayStation 6. Oh, 5 or yeah. Okay. And, and where did that where did where did you find that out? Did somebody send you a note to that extent? No, no, no. Was it, it that was rat Tony? What? It was on it was on the dark web. Was it that rat Tony? No, no, it was that you told me yesterday. <laughs> you call. <laughs> <laughs> but it took me a minute to, uh, to 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 put two and two together. Well, yeah. Well, I um, um, yeah. So I got the, I got the PlayStation Five, and it's uh, it's a beautiful machine. God, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's almost uh, it's almost a work of art. What? I I had a Pong machine once. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, it it was it was pretty good. It was back in the eighties, I think. It's amazing how far we've come. There's yeah. this game I'm playing. It's called The Last of Us, and they they just redid the first version of it, which was done in 2014, mm -hmm. and they redid the whole thing. They they did the same audio and the same visuals basically, but they then they just made it more real than it ever has looked before, and it's spectacular. It is just yeah. spectacular. And to think it's gone from that, from Pong, yeah, right to that in my lifetime, in fact, in about half my lifetime, is amazing. Yeah. It is just amazing. Uh, and who knows where it'll wind up. Someday when you're playing a game, you'll be playing what looks like actual human beings. Well, they've got you know. those masks that you wear that uh what no, do they forget call that it? forget uh, that yeah. that's yeah but that's you know that's virtual reality yeah. and I, quite frankly i find that bullshit you know yeah. i i don't care about a virtual reality god knows my reality is virtual enough you know yeah so. well it's on a game five but mm -hmm. uh oh i meant to tell you also um i mentioned that movie that i couldn't remember uh, the name I, I oh by like, the way let me tell you one other thing before you yeah. do that so in this PlayStation 5, they, I got it with a, a CD, a Blu-ray reader, wow. okay? So you, you, put the, you put the discs in it. You can get it without that, and you just download all the games digitally, but this was a different thing altogether. And I come to find out that the disc player in the uh, PS5 is a 4K Blu-ray disc wow. player. You which have any it, which if I over. if I just bought one as a standalone would cost me two hundred bucks. Nice. Yeah, it's really nice. So I could play like uh, you know four K uh, discs if I want to. Do you have those? I know no. you used to no, a I lot don't. of Blu rays. Blu rays, but I never don't have the four Ks now. Uh, oh, the the movie I was trying to think of yesterday uh, was uh, um, called like Mister Harrington's Phone. Yeah, uh, it was Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, I think it's on Netflix. Did mm -hmm. you see it yet? No, but I hear the reviews on it are terrible. Uh, no, I, I liked it. Well, that, and, uh, that that figures. Yeah, well, and I also watched that Mia Kunis uh, movie, The Luckiest Girl in the World. Mm -hmm. I, I like that one, too. Boy, you, you like crap, don't you? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. there's, there's not much on. But Let me actually, see here. Rotten Tomatoes. Let me see here. Mr. Harrington's Tomatoes. phone. Tomatoes. Harrington. Uh, was actually a very good movie. It, it, re, it reminded me a little bit of uh, Christine, you know, the car that kills people. Mm -hmm. it was a, what's a it, what's it called, Mr. Harrington's? Uh, Mr. Harrington's phone or something like that. The, uh, kid gives him an iPhone. Uh, interesting movie. Mm. Hmm. So you haven't seen it. Baby face Harrington. <laughs> Did you find it? Mr. Oh, what is it, Mr. Harrington? I it's, it's it's like Mr. Harrington or something very close to that. Mr. Uh, oh, Mr. Barrington, maybe. 
No, I no. thought it started with an H. Hmm. Uh, and it's a Stephen King uh, movie. Uh, let me mm -hmm. see if I can find it. Let me it. see here if I can find it here. Mr. Harrington, Harrigan's. Harrigan, Harrigan, yeah. okay. Yeah, it got, it got a pretty amazing score on, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, what, 62? 45%. Well, you know, those guys don't know what they're talking about. Uh, it was actually, it was, it was a good movie. And uh, one of the guys that worked but for But not me, according to most people. And that well, was the... Not according to some tomato eater, you know. This but, is, um, it, and the audience score was 53%. Well, it, it, and it kept me entertained. And, you know, I, I watch Gabnet too. So, you know, it, I, you can't... Uh, can't trust what I say, but um, I, I also the luckiest girl in the world that was pretty good. And Lou, I don't know if you saw Lou luckiest yet. girl in the world. That was the Mia Kunis. Uh, thing. And it's called the luckiest girl alive. Boy, you alive. don't get the okay, names of your world movie. alive. Oh well, it it uh, it it forty three percent. Forty three. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. rocking it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, what about Lou? Did, have you seen Lou yet? Let me see here. No, I heard, I heard, I saw it up somewhere. I don't know where I saw it. I enjoyed it. that one too. Lou oh, with Allison Janney. Uh, I, it was something I was interested in watching. That's seventy percent. That's seventy percent. Right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's that's at least stuff that's on. There hasn't been there hasn't been much. I mean, you're you're starving for a documentary here and there just to find something entertaining. I was watching yeah. a documentary last night on uh, the music of James Bond films and the yeah. history of that. Yeah, it was is pretty there, good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, is it's, there on, any, it's on uh, Amazon Prime. What? Uh, is there any correlation between the different films and the music, or uh, is it just uh, each film has a, a different score? Uh, you know, well, There's, most most uh, most of the scores were written by one guy up until a few yeah. years ago, John Barry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you, you just sometimes when you see these uh, tri uh, these movie uh, uh, things where you know there's a, a whole bunch of them like Star Wars or mm -hmm. something like that, there might be a tie-in with the music, and I was just wondering if that's what they found mm -hmm. in the documentary. No, no, no. Well, let's uh, let's. Uh, there are a bunch of people who want to come on here, so let's right. let's admit them and 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 right. see who they are. First well, of all, there's Jeff Dr. Stein Dine, with his Doctor Wallace with uh, Doctor Nunn. Yeah, mm -hmm. get your face in the picture. Get yeah. your face. There you go. And uh, there's uh, there's your old pal, uh, <laughs> Alan. And uh, let's see, Charlie Wallace is. Playing the part of the Invisible Man tonight. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, there yeah. he is. Out of the bathroom. There he is. There oh. he is. Here comes. Uh, here, <laughs> co here comes Charlie Fortas. Charlie, your flies open. <laughs> <laughs> always is. I I do the same thing. My fly is always. I I I will be out. I'll go around. I'll go shopping. I mean, I will look down. And I forgot to zip up my fly. It's good ventilation. It and you remember the days when people were nice enough to tell you that your fly <laughs> is? No Let's more. see. My plans oh, for God. the weeks. Wait a minute. I don't I see the top of the it, week. though. Let's but, see the top of it. What oh, is, it's uh, it's a house, uh, plan. house plan. Oh, I see. So you're building you, you, Habitat for Humanity, right? Yeah, yes. I see. Okay, good. That's, uh, that's uh, what do Vernon. What you do, uh, The electrical? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can we do a fact check on Phil? Wouldn't that be a neat thing to do? Oh yeah, what are you what are you checking? Well, let's see. Uh, the three airports that you told me earlier, which panned out, were not the three that you announced. You said it, that got Heart hacked Field, by the Russians. Atlanta. You said Atlanta, uh, LaGuardia, and LAX. LaGuardia wasn't one of them. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Chicago was. Chicago. Chicago. Was. Okay. Yeah. This is from the beginning of the show. The first <laughs> Victosa is going to be pulled off the market because of a lot of side effects. And uh, I didn't know you were on Victosa. So find, find another drug. I knew, is this I knew, one of those I, nights, I, I, Brian, where I need to bring a drink? Yeah, 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 probably. Probably. Uh, uh, Victosa, yeah. I used to know him. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
And oh, so, yeah. And so those two two dollar charges yeah. were uh, charges at X Tube, weren't they? Oh, of course. Yeah. No, they weren't X Tube. They uh, they were the site that you go to. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, yeah. Bring it on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Come on, come on. What's the, yeah, what's the, boy, this is like two people fighting with sites. What? I, I don't know the name of the gay sites. It's like two people fighting by bitch slapping each other. <laughs> so I'm going to have dinner with him it. tomorrow night. He likes it. You ought to see him run around in his little assless chaps or his, his maid's outfit is cute. Uh, and what about your tutu? Okay, well, see, I, you this know, is bitch I'm slapping. That's how you is. notice. <laughs> Alex, and I gotta have Art, dinner with him wait tomorrow. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Just shut up, Phil. What? Did you know Art LeBeau? Art I, LeBeau? Did, I, I didn't know him, Can but I knew who he was. I mean, Art LeBeau was around doing radio when I was a teenager. Yeah. When yeah. I was starting in radio. He was in L.A. And uh, he, uh, he then did these Oldies But Goodies albums in the early days. And he was, uh, you know, he's pr pretty well known. And he was working till the very end. You know. it, 97 just passed away. 97. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wasn't there a comedian in Las Vegas, uh, LeBeau, that was a friend of uh, Steve, um, uh, what's his name, that used to have on the show? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. It, yeah, it, it is LeBeau. It is LeBeau, but this, uh, yeah, uh, but it's LeBeau, B-O-V-E. B -O -V -E. Oh, LeBeau. Yeah. Was yeah. he with Sam Kinison? Uh, yeah, he or? was Sam's best friend. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Somebody told me Sam Kennison was killed in a truck accident. No. A car. trucking car accident. Car whatever. accident. I think the guy that hit him was driving a pickup truck. Yeah, pickup I, truck. I, I think so. I figured it was drug overdose. The guy did more cocaine to kill seven <laughs> No, well, here's what they said. They, they, Somebody said, I always knew Sam would die hmm. of uh, drugs, but I didn't know they were going to be in somebody else's body. <laughs> You know, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, the he was a good comedian. Yeah, yeah, he was fine. Good friend yeah. of mine. Uh, oh, by the way, Phil Pong came out in the seventies, not the eighties. What? What came Pong, out? You were talking Pong, about? Oh, the seventies. Okay, so I had it in the seventies. Pong was invented by uh, what's his name? The Atari remember? guy. Atari. Right? Yeah, but he yeah. he also went on and he did something else after Atari. Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck e. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. Yeah, for real. Where no, you can see no we can see a bunch of disembodied hooves clapping on the wall. I thought it was cute. If no I was, was a kid, that would scare the shit out of me. Mm. My my kids Everything used to scares. like it there. And you take them to Chuck E. Cheese, and they would go in this chute that would uh, put them down into a bunch of plastic okay, balls. Oh. Now, when I think about it, all those all those kids were probably sick with colds, and the plastic balls were spreading <laughs> the the flu to all the other kids. Yeah, or they were peeing in the ball yeah, pit. Oh, that's yeah. True. Yeah. 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 yeah, But anyway, so, yeah. uh, I, let me tell you a story. When I was working at KMEL in San Francisco, when I first started there, uh, and it, you know, uh, I would see the sun come up over the bay while I was doing my show, because out the window was the bay, and it, uh, during the winter, especially, you could see the sun coming up. And somebody looks out the window and down into our parking lot and says, "What the fuck is that?" And I, what? And so a record was playing, so I got up and I looked down there, and there's this. Giant rat. <laughs> a giant rat. But it wasn't really a rat. It was a guy in a giant rat costume. And so they come up. And the rat walks into the control room. These were the days where you could just walk right into the control room. And a guy is with him. And I said, uh, pardon me, what is this all about? And they said, well, we're from Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. And I'm, now I'm doing this all on the air. I said, what is Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza? He said, well, Nolan Bushnell, that was the guy's name. I tried to say that three times. Yeah, has started to uh, um, uh, started a thing called Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater now that he's no longer with Atari. And uh, it's a place for kids to go and so on and so on. And they say... Did any, it's a pizza joint, right? He says, yeah. I said, kid, you go in there to eat, right? He said, yeah. 
I said, did anybody ever tell you it's not really a good idea to have a rat as a mascot for a food <laughs> place? Did they bring pizza? No. Anyway, Wasn't that they, building they, the rats out? Wait a minute. But the point is, he, and, and he said, it's not a rat. It's a mouse. I said, <laughs> you don't want to eat someplace with mice at, <laughs> as the logo. You know? I'm <laughs> sure Disney did everything he could to keep Mickey Mouse's picture away from a pizza joint at Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. It, it used to be a big thing to bring food to that show. Charles Bolello used to bring food. And didn't uh, the um, uh, the Oakland A's? That's not even what I'm talking about. Yeah, what well, show? I, what I, I, I was about? more interested in the food. Boy, you can drive this show right off the road into a ditch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had a funny story. He but... does that on X Tube too. Does he do that? <laughs> really? Yeah, it's Red Tube. Uh, that one's free. Red Tube wasn't porn. What, red tube? Red tube's porn. No, nope, red tube wasn't porn. Red tube was something else, I think. Ah, red. I red thought I knew everything about porn, but -E I guess I did. not I'm gonna have to turn in my card. Yeah, R E D tube, not red. Uh, red. Red. Okay. You don't prove it to us, Phil. Pop it up behind your screen. Oh, Come yeah, on. Share sure. screen. Share screen. <laughs> oh, God. Go to your I'm browser. Gonna... That's all. I don't know how to do that. But Alan does. Hmm? Alan knows how to share his screen and get red tube up there. I've never heard of red tube. Yes, you have. Isn't that the kitty porn site you started with Alex <laughs> Jones? <laughs> hey, you, I, you had mentioned to me that uh, about Alex Jones, uh, we were, I was talking to Alan earlier, and uh, he said, you know, it's free speech. How come they don't sue these people that say the Holocaust never existed? Well, you know? to begin with, to begin with, um, this is a case where, you know, uh, to, let me say, first of all, a billion is a bit excessive. OK, sure. even in this situation with Alex Jones, who is a low life jerk. All right. Yep. But. You know, you know, I, I'm a low life jerk and nobody makes me pay a billion dollars, you know, but, but nevertheless, I mean, I think that these families are due some restitution because they were being harassed by the public who were fans of Alex Jones. One father talked about the fact that some people went to his child's grave and urinated on it, you know, as That's a result of Alex Jones's. You know, and other people were being threatened. Uh, threatened to so, dig it up, too. Yeah. They, for the grief that they, they had initial grief, their grief was compounded by Alex Jones, and they deserve some kind of re restitution for that. Now, let's face it. It's almost a billion dollars. It's $956 million. All right? Almost a billion. And I don't think if, I think that's in addition to what he already owes of like $56 million to these other people. The point yep. is, the point is that he's never going to pay it, you know, and it'll go to appeal and probably they will lower the amount. Yes. Uh, uh, how, how much, how much, how much is he worth? How much has he made over these years? hundred and something million. Oh, at oh, least. That's at what... least, at least he makes yeah. about, what did they say? $800,000 a week. Really? Off of contributions and subscriptions. And yeah. he doesn't even sell carpet. In the crap that he sells on his website. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah so, you know, over the money. years. But the question is, the question is, how much money did he make during that period of time when he was vilifying these families? And getting his ratings up. And, getting, and making more money on advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Getting more All subscribers. All that money should be gone. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, he, he took advantage. No, he, Phil, he, he's hiding that money. You know that. He, he, doesn't, he, doesn't he have freedom of speech, First Amendment rights? This is, doesn't want. come under freedom of speech. This comes under libel, and libel yeah. is a, a speech uh, okay. uh, offense. I mean, you can sue someone for libel. Um, uh, I believe, if I'm not wrong, libel is spoken, slander is written. Or it might be the other way around, but I think I'm right. Yeah. 
uh, and and it, it has nothing to do with freedom of speech. You know, you are harming another individual, right. and you are responsible for that. And th what he was charged with wasn't criminal. He was charged, I think, in a civil case. Civil, yeah. And and mm -hmm. I can sue you tomorrow for saying something nasty about me. If a columnist writes something in his column about me that isn't true, and then I can show that it caused me great grievous injury, it cost me money or something else, I can sue him. It has nothing so to if, do with freedom of speech. It's not, you You, you can sue if you're a public figure. Uh, I guess you well, can yes, sue. Yes, you can if sue you're, if you're a public figure, but the more a public figure you are, like for instance, a the president well, can sue. Donald Trump is, tries, tries to sue people. Well, he has less of a chance of winning any suit because his notoriety and because he was president, the higher up you are, the less your ability to... Like, for instance, the president of the United States could call me a pederast, okay? And I can't sue him, okay? Wow. On the other hand, I can call him a pederast and he can't sue me. There is no ability of the president to be sued or to sue anybody. Hmm. So, that's, uh, wait, where's my soda? What happened to my soda? I had a soda here. Oh, uh, see, Charlie, Where I was talking it? about going blurry. Yeah, I don't have my soda here. Well, You're blurry. Now I'm blurry. Yeah. All right. Oh, you got to okay. put the Vaseline somewhere else besides on your camera. <laughs> hmm? I just have to turn my camera off and back on to get rid of that. Hold on yeah, a second. Let me go I get do. some soda. Talk to each other, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, Brian, what's, uh, what's the story with that Cadillac? That was pretty cool, that uh, 74 limo. Oh, yeah. No, I just... Uh, if Yeah. If I had more money and I was more irresponsible, I'd be buying more cars all the time. And a place to park it. Yeah. I have a, actually I have a big driveway and yeah. when we bought the house this uh, side gate here like our house is like wide mm -hmm. and property is wide and there's like this the, the governor's driveway so all my friends said oh my god you're gonna build a huge shop over there and I said no so my, my 34 Cadillac is enough time and money but okay. if I didn't buy that car then I would have probably bought a whole bunch of stuff so yeah, well, that that uh, Fleetwood it, it was intriguing. I meant to bring it in, and it yeah. turns yeah, out it looked like it looked like those Cadillacs that they had in that Led Zeppelin, the song remains the same movie. You know, when they're going, that's why I said crank up the Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Alex. Uh, we were just talking cars. Uh, we're, we're done. I, I I was gone for three seconds. I mean, how did you mind wind up talking about cars? Well, uh, uh, Brian... you know, it goes to one subject. Like miles an hour. Brian posted uh, a picture of a 1974 Cadillac Fleetwood, and it was very cool. Definitely mafia car. And uh, Alex probably drove in those back in the day. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we lost your buddy. Who did we? Oh, oh, oh Mr. Allen. Where would he go? Yeah. I don't know. I. I, I didn't call in at this time a few years ago, but I remember when uh, Tony's remember Tony's camera was so dirty it was uh, it was like that. And then you guys, then Alex, you told him like, why don't you try cleaning your lens? And he cleaned it, and it was perfect. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I thought he just had a bad camera, you know, and he didn't. So anyway, no, I should have just had to turn it off and right back on. I should so, have taken. So Brian, minute. Brian, did you ever take uh, did you ever take uh, Adrian to Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Pizza Time Theater? Yeah, a couple of times. Really? Did she like yeah. it? I mean, she was a ba kid at the time, yeah. baby at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, she was really young. Yeah, but they do they do have a funny picture that's bounced around on Facebook a couple of times, and it's like the it's like the junkyards, you know, like the. Yeah. The landfill mm -hmm. and there's like a big Chuck E. Cheese this that one of the places after they closed must have thrown away and it's all dirty and it's in the pile it's just really crazy they had one down the street here and after COVID they closed it so really Chuck E. Cheese yeah too many too many kids yeah. died in the ball pit <laughs> the, lost. Or, the original one was like on Story near Story like, yeah yeah yeah, Story Road. That one's still there, and it's huge. It's got the the clover leaf and the it's got the huge thing pylon yeah, with the yeah. huge. There's, Chuck there's there's but one still, it's green. a rat. And wasn't he smoking a cigar at one time? <laughs> I don't know. He was, wasn't he? 
Well, and I'm figuring, you know, this is it for kids? What are you doing having a, a rat, number one, but then a rat who's smoking mm. a cigar? You know, Boy, that really that really makes me want to go get a pizza at that place. <laughs> really? we, we used to have birthday parties for our kids at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Do you, That's do you the only be the worst taste in pizza. I think Domino's is better. Yeah. yeah you, you, you know, I, I would say one thing. The the birthday parties there, that's the only time I've gone, maybe two or three times. But there are people that take their kids and then go and have pizza and let their kids play. And that's that's sort of bizarre. I think there's a lot other places to go than Chuck E. Cheese for entertainment. Well, if you're going to take a kid to Chuck E. Cheese's for a birthday party, you're pretty well short-sheeting your kid. You know? <laughs> there's a Chuck E. I Cheese. I loved it. What are you talking at- about? At the end of the exit that I get off of to go to my store, and I pass it every morning, and they, you know you've got a sign that they're trying to hire as well. But Chuck E. Cheese pizza is like five bucks uh, for a pizza, and I've never gotten one. But uh, <clears throat> no. pizza in well, what what is uh, uh, now Domino's? I see. I can be honest with you. Yeah. I I hate pizza. Yeah, I'm I'm one of these people. Not American. That, well, no, I'll tell you why I hate pizza. It's just too much dough and too little of everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. Even in New York, in New York, they've got the thin crust. No, they, uh, but they don't. The thin crust today is not like the thin. When I live, grew up in in North Beach in San when Francisco. When I was a boy. No, <laughs> when I when I when I uh, grew up in North Beach, uh, I um, I was uh, uh, I loved the pizza we got. Because my parents would take me down to this pizza place. It was thin. It was thin. You had to, like, pick it up and double it over to kind of eat it and get it in your mouth. It wasn't like, you know, you pick it up and it's just sticking straight out, you know. You can't I double the, over a Chicago-style pizza. Well, the Chicago yeah. style is different. That's deep dish. Yeah. Now, I, I watch this guy who does pizza reviews, and one of the places that he recommends is John's of Bleecker, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I know John's a bleaker, uh, and he says that is you know one of the best pizzas, and also a Defaro. I've been there. I went there with I think with uh, with uh, Slayton. Yeah, and he's oh, this is the best pizza ever, and I had it, and I went, yeah, you know, I, really, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the pizza I used to get in North Beach when I was growing up, when I was a kid, was terrific. It was wonderful. It was thin crust, you know. It was all of that. And then they started coming out with, uh, uh, what was the one that I always Sicilian? Hated? Well, no, Sicilian's different. Yeah. But, I mean, the deep dish pizza, which is like Uno. Uno's, Uno's Chicago. Uno's pretty good. Really? Uh, yeah, Uno's okay. Uh, I think that's doughy. But Domino's looks awful. It's horrid. <laughs> The cardboard is better than the pizza at Domino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the box. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now, Marjorie loves pizza. Yeah. You know, oh, we order out and we should get a margarita pizza. Always a margarita. Margarita? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. It's an alcoholic not, pizza. I don't no, no, no. Know. It, it, it's, it's a mozzarella. Of mozzarella. Yeah, mozzarella and I think a basil leaves or something. Mm hmm. Hmm. It's okay, you know. But I mean, I just I don't uh, I don't like pizza. So uh, the worst pizza is in New Haven, Connecticut. Really? Oh, are you kidding? The, this no. guy that I listened to says Sally's in New Haven. Uh, Sally's is it? Yeah, yeah. In New Haven is one of the best. Pizzas. You got to be born there. Oh, it's, really? It's terrible. Born at the pizza place. Yeah, see, Pam likes it, but she's from. She grew up in Connecticut. Yeah. What does Connecticut know about pizza, right, Jeff? That's right. They, and they, this guy made a big deal about how he invented pizza and all that stuff. And then they've got like seven people from the family, and they've each owned a different place. Yeah. So they have like seven pizza places in Connecticut. Well, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. When I, uh, uh, um, uh, in New York, a guy came out once with a pizza. And the thing in New York, if you want to be successful at food stuff, is you've got to put more of something on something. 
Yes. And what this pizza was, it had more cheese on top of it than a normal pizza you got down <clears throat> the street. And so because it had more cheese, they had lines around the block. This was down below, right below 14th Street on 6th Avenue. Yeah. And it was called Ray's. Mm -hmm. And it was Ray's All Pizza. Complete. And everybody, I mean, you, you had to wait in line for an hour to get a Ray's Pizza. Am I right? You know what I'm talking about, uh, Phil. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, people said, you know, he's doing so well. Let's start having our pizza place, and we'll name it Ray's, too. <laughs> Yes. So oh. then the then Ray renamed his place Original Rays. So all these other people named themselves <clears throat> at least Original Rays. What happened was I looked in the phone book one day and I said, I wonder how many Rays pizzas there are. We counted in the yellow pages, 136 <laughs> Rays pizzas. <laughs> And I think Ray's almost became, you don't say pizza, I'm going to get a Ray's. You know, I mean, it just, it was ridiculous. And so you would go to the wrong Ray's and you got a terrible pizza and you went to the regular Ray's and eh, it was okay. It wasn't great, you know. I, I was once in Brooklyn and my ex-wife were, were driving down the street and she grew up in San Francisco. Yeah. And I said... The best pizza is in Brooklyn. I said, just snap your fingers. I will pull over at the first available parking space, and the first pizza parlor that's closest to your door will go in. And if it's not the best pizza you ever had, you know, and it was unbelievable. It was so good, you know, and all you got to do is go like that. And pizza in New York, it's the water. It's something that makes New York pizza so good. You took her to Little Caesars? The five dollar uh, little Caesar <laughs> puts the cheese in the in the in the crust. <laughs> yeah, who came up with that idea? Yeah. That was Little Caesars. That's a little Caesars. That's bullshit. Five dollar pizzas. Yeah, but Jeff, there's one, Jeff there's agreed. One in Concord over by Phil's store. Yeah, no, that's uh, uh, what, what's the name of that place? Little Chuck Caesar. E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. No, the Chuck E. Cheese mascot in San Francisco. There were a lot of really uh, interesting mascots. It was the Bob's Big Boy, mm -hmm. and there was, uh, what was the name of that uh, uh, place that served burritos and so forth? Uh, Taco uh, Bell? Taco Bell? Uh, no, it, it was like in the 60s and 70s in San Francisco. Um, there was one on the corner of Lombard and Fillmore. Um, uh, they served hot dogs and, uh, and burritos. Mm -hmm. No, nothing you ever heard of out in anywhere but in San Francisco. When I was living in Chicago, yeah. this place opened up and it served roast beef sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And they were delicious. I mean, they put them on a bun and then they sliced the roast beef right there. You can see the piece of roast beef. They're slicing it and it's on the bun. It's great. And then they gave you horsey, horseradish sauce mm -hmm. to put on it. And it was delicious. I mean, we were going there five nights a week. It was just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really good. So oh, then oh. they were, did so well that they franchised. Cut to me moving to California, and they franchised, and there I see that same store in a, in a mall. And it's called Arby's. Mm. Uh oh now how horrible is arby's these days it's horrible yeah. yeah but back then the original arby's was incredible just incredible uh, and the, the place i was trying to think of was doggy diner do you remember doggy diner yes <laughs> yeah. yeah but they all had those mascots you know yeah, they had the, a wiener dog for a dachshund yeah doggy diner was the mascot yeah well, but you grew up in San Francisco, Alex. You, you don't remember uh, Doggy Diner? I remember Doggy Bob's Diner. I, and... I never ate at Doggy Diner. No? No. I, yeah. When I, uh, uh, That's before... another bad image. That's another bad image because you're thinking, oh, well, what's in these hot dogs? Dog meat? Well, the, <laughs> yeah. Well, 
uh, you know, there was a time before ATMs, I had no cash on me. And uh, at Doggy Diner, you can get the burrito for 50 cents. <laughs> and that was, you know, an easy, easy way to, to eat. Did uh, Doggy Diner have a bun on the hot dogs? I, I don't know. I only got I mean, the burrito. Alex's place, a roast beef sandwich came with bread. Mm. Mm. You made well, you made a point when you were talking about the roast beef sandwich uh, that it came with a slice of bread or two slices of bread. I thought, well, it wouldn't have been a sandwich without that, although you could put it in a burrito. Alex, you know, in New York, there used to be some good delicatessens like the stage and the car. Well, delis, delis, you used to have hundreds of them in New York City. And you know mm. how many there are in New York now? <laughs> I think three. Well, really? Zay, Zay bars. No, Zay Bars is not a delicatessen. Oh, Zay Bars uh, is a is a uh, is a uh, what do you call it? a grocery uh, store? Basically, grocery, yeah. yeah. No, they sell no. stuff there. I have some Come in the refrigerator no, right now. Tell us the name of the three places. I don't know the three places. Uh, I I knew a the place. Stage the stage is no people. longer there. The stage is no longer there. Right. Uh, the uh, Carnegie. Carnegie is no longer there. Um, <laughs> there's one downtown. There's, uh, there's uh, what do you call it? Uh, the one that was across the street from where I used to live. Um, oh, God, my, my mind's... Uh, what, uh, I don't know, 14th Street? Yeah, no, no, Houston. Across from Rikers Island? Awesome. No. no. Um, yeah, you know how big the sandwiches were at the... Oh, at the, the Carnegie, street? they were like this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they were literally, folks. I'm not lying to you. Oops, I'm trying to do this so that like, can, like you can <laughs> see what I'm. But I mean, they were literally it was that thick, yeah. and they were just pile meat upon meat upon meat on top of it. You it never could good. get your mouth open to eat the goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. So really, you had to eat it with a fork. Yeah, you know. And usually, you'd eat it with a fork, <laughs> and there'd be two pieces of bread left behind. You know. Yeah, who wants to fill up on the bread? Or you take it home. You you couldn't eat you couldn't eat the whole thing. You 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 mm -hmm. take quarters of it home. Yeah. Uh, and this 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 advice comes from somebody that goes and gets double Whopper burgers because they're two for five dollars. Well, sometimes I don't eat the second. I give it to a homeless guy. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. Speaking of franchises, you guys ever heard of Ollie's Trolley? No. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. It was it was a hamburger uh, joint that John Y. Brown, the guy who took uh, KFC National, uh, he uh, he bought that place, and I think there's only one left, and it's down at the corner of Fourth and Kentucky, here in Louisville. Hmm. Did well, Kentucky Fried Chicken really come from Kentucky? Oh, a cat, yes, cat, Harlan, Kentucky. Cats is, where, is delicatessen. Is where Colonel Sanders opened his first restaurant was in Harlan, Kentucky. Wow. Cats is delicatessen. Cats is. Oh, yeah. yeah. What movie was Cats is in? Oh, uh, Harry Met Sally? Right. That's where the she says, I'll have what she's having. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Cats is never closes. Yeah. Cats mm. isn't that good. Everybody no. goes, oh, we got to go to Cats. I mean, it lines around the block, you know, but they were terrible. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Everybody's one wanting one. to meet uh, Meg Ryan, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, uh, there is one good one in Connecticut, of all places. There's one called Ben's here. Uh, I, I was looking at. There were, there were more than three, but I mean, it used to be you, you couldn't turn a block without finding another deli, and now they're, you know. <clears throat> what's it called, Jeff? Um, Tim, what's the name of the one in Connecticut? The, the place that we uh, eat. The deli. For Jewish deli stuff. Oh, uh, Ryan's. And it's it's like in Hartford. I'd like to open up a deli called Yids and see how long it stays open. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I never hear, Char at least Charlie never said, Charlie. Tony never says, I'm going to go out and get some yids today. So, yeah. uh, Give him, uh, you know, he goes, you know, in New York, they have something called diners. And, you know, they, they do a pretty good job. You no, know, they're, they're kind of going the way of all flesh, too. They're disappearing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Diners, what were great about diners, okay, 
And I hope I hope uh, we're not making you too hungry, Vernon, because I can't mm -hmm. imagine you get any of this stuff in Kentucky. Okay. But they had these diners, and in the diners, if to begin with, the menu was like eighty pages. You know, wow. they're all the variation of the same thing. But you know. And like you could get salads, you could get sandwiches, you could get turkey, you could get this and that, and brisket. Man, man. It, was like, it was like Denny's. No, what, what, the was, what was the what was the hallmark of the diner was what I call the carousel of pies yes. and cakes, mm -hmm. and it was this rotating thing with the most <laughs> delicious looking cakes and pies rotating. Inside this hermetically sealed day after case. day until they're sold. Right, right, and they were always kind of fresh because they kept them in this refrigerated carousel thing that went around like this, and uh, it was uh, some of those things. You you finally get one of those things, and you go, well, you know, I'm going to get that one, and it's not going to be as good. They were incredible. They were spectacular. Right. I don't know where they got their pies from. Denny's. Denny's exactly, <laughs> and, and and they all look like train cars, like a, 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 a you know the diners. Yeah, you know, they were unique. Yeah. That they they looked like they were a aluminum. Hey, here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to occasionally you'll find some place like <clears throat> Bob's World Famous Burgers. Okay, so what I want to do is find a place like that. And then as I travel the globe with my camera, mm. I want to go up to people, whether it's in Spain or Italy or England or France, and ask a variety of people, have you ever heard of Bob's hamburgers? <laughs> I've heard of Bob's big boy. And, and they'll go, no, I haven't really. And then I want to take all these tapes of people saying, no, I've never heard of Bob's hamburgers, mm -hmm. and go back into that store with a videotape of all these people saying they never heard of it. I said, I want you to take world famous off of that sign. <laughs> because they're all world famous. Yep. Who's mm -hmm. world famous? You know. Do you guys have this thing? What, five guys? What, what, yeah, what? yeah. Oh, we got five, five guys. guys. Oh, yeah. There, there's there's one here where I live. There's one also right up here on Broadway. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, they're not bad, actually. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. They're expensive for a hamburger. Yeah. But they're a good hamburger. Yeah. You know. Hamburger, fries, and a soda. Yeah. When, you know, when we get for the, for like, when I take the kids there, Tiffany doesn't like it, but when I take the kids there, they give us a bag like this big, just full of fries. Yeah. <laughs> they also they have their, their fries are healthy. What about their peanuts? You know, you can yeah. scoop out the peanuts while you're waiting. And, uh, That's right. You can eat the uh, peanuts. In San Francisco, up on Lombard Street, Lombard and, and Divisadero, there was a place that uh, I think it served hamburgers, but you can, I didn't go for the hamburgers. Oh, uh, they, Max's? No, no. But they made Max, they made no, potato no. chips, and they f did them fresh there. And you could ask for them soft, and they would make soft potato chip. Oh God, I would just eat bags of this stuff. <laughs> Actually, Max's was a really good del uh, 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 food place. The, the most famous Max's in the city was on on, and it's closed now. Uh, closed during COVID was on um, uh, Van Ness. Van yeah. Ness down at Mission. Yeah, right in, where all the, you know, near the Opera Plaza and everything, a couple doors down from the Opera Plaza. I'm trying to remember if I remember right. Max's, but I. Uh, it, oh, it, they had really thick New York style pastrami and, and roast mm. beef. And, oh, it was really good. And they had Mel's too, right? Mel's yeah, Mel's, there's a Mel's on Van Ness. I think they're still open. They're a couple blocks down. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mel's though. Mel's Max's was Opera Deli. Mel's That's was basically the the um, uh, diner, the, the diner yeah. that was featured in American Graffiti. American Graffiti, right? Yeah, and they had them everywhere. And the one that they used in the movie was in uh, Modesto, I think, or, or Stockton, someplace. Modesto, I think. Was you're right. Modesto. Modesto or Petaluma? Was, yeah. was the restaurant you liked on Lombard called Upton's? The ones uh, it, it, that served those um, uh, home fries, uh, I think it was Upton, U-P-T-O-N. Oh, by the way, let me tell you something about, about American Graffiti. 
that's kind of always, I've always, always wanted, I've never met up with George Lucas. I've been sitting at a table next to him up at Skywalker Ranch, but I've never had a chance to talk to him. I don't think so. No, I didn't. But anyway, um, I, I always wanted to ask him. You know, the quote on American Graffiti was, on the ads, was, where were you in 62? <laughs> You know where I was in 62? Modesto, Vietnam? California, working at a radio station. Wow. Okay. You could have been the guy. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me finish. Let me finish. Been. And, and um, uh, George Lucas was living in Modesto in 62, growing up, obviously listening to the radio. And I just, you know, I just wonder how much of anything I did wound up in his consciousness when he made this movie, like having a disc jockey be the main tent pole around which the the storyline uh, revolved. He probably he probably never heard of you. So what so oh, you know, no. the, the story had you know the story revolves with the radio stuff with Wolfman Jack. Was Wolfman Jack around there that those times? Wolfman Jack worked out of out of Tijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, a station <laughs> called X Oh, what was it? X, X something. I can't remember which what the call letters were. And he did his show out of there. And the reason, only reason he became popular, is because it was on a one hundred thousand watt radio station. Now the most wow. anybody would allow in the United States was fifty thousand. This was a hundred thousand watt station. I think it was XTRA, but I may be mistaken. And he was on that station. Now I don't know if he did his show out of Tijuana. He may have had it a line that went all the way to like mm. Los Angeles and he did it from there. But he became well renowned because people could hear him at night everywhere yeah, in the United right. States. Skip. They call that skip, right, he, Vernon? Yeah, well you don't even yeah. have to call it skip at that point. It's just a hundred thousand. It's watts. ground wave. Uh, it's ground wave because AM stations at night, the ionosphere comes down, and it it makes makes those waves. Well, it's the ground wave going up. It, the it, earth. Well, I, it's not a. It, it becomes a night wave, if I remember correctly. That's what I was taught. Yeah, you know but it, that's why it, that's why AM stations you can pick them up at night from a great distance because uh, the signals the signals curve with the earth. And that's why yeah, the, the, re, and, the ionosphere. Yeah, and that's the reason also. Why a couple of radio stations I worked at in my lifetime, like KTIM and San Rafael, and there was another station I worked at, had to sign off at sunset no. because you were protecting mm. the signal of those other stations that were called clear channel stations, and they didn't, ha and we didn't, you didn't have to protect them until the sun went down. Are so, there any uh, clear channel stations left, Alex? You know. KGO just closed. I think closed. KGO is still, I mean, it's still a clear channel. It's got 50,000 watts. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, though, if the... Uh, WOR? I thought WOR. I clear channel. Huh? I thought no, I heart radio. No, clear was channel, big. clear channel was, you're mixing it up. We're talking about clear channel as a method of, uh, oh, broad, yes. uh, yeah. of broadcasting. Clear channel was a group of radio stations owned by somebody, and it was called clear channel. Communications. I worked for them briefly. KGO, uh, you could hear everywhere at night. I could hear them in in, in Los Angeles. I heard them in. Yeah, Phoenix. they didn't go as far as some other stations. So I mean, what I used to do when I was a kid, WABC. And, and Vernon will like this one. When I was a kid, when I was starting out, and I wanted to be in radio, and I loved radio, I would go to the top of Mount Tamalpais in California. With your girlfriend? How tall is Tamil Pius? It's, I don't know. It's uh, it's the tallest peak in the Bay Area. The tallest there's peak in the Bay Area. There's and I would, I would go there. there at night, park my car, turn on the radio, and then start what we call DXing. And going through and seeing how far away I could hear a signal. And one time I actually heard a signal, I think, from Philadelphia. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you, you had no you had no girlfriends back then, right? That's right. I, I was wondering if I was wondering if the flagpole brought in stations from the East Coast. WABC AM was one of those channels that you could hear. The clear channel, yeah. Yeah. 
know, WHAS mm -hmm. here in Louisville but, used to but be clear it, channel, but I don't think it is And anymore. I occasionally up there actually got like radio stations from the Philippines and mm -hmm. other countries. Wow. Uh, but it was rare. It had to be a very good night for skipping, as it were. Am I right, Vernon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was a ground wave and a sky wave, and at night the sky wave predominated over the ground wave. That's what I was told. Maybe I've been mistaken all these years, but that's what I was told by engineers at the time. Somebody Look, said it depends on the frequency. If, you, if you're talking about AM stations, you don't really get a skip off the ionosphere. The ionosphere comes down at night, but that causes the signal to curve with the Earth more. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, uh, 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 yeah, J Charlie? Yeah, it says uh, what the mountain you were talking about is 2,579 feet high. Hmm. The mountain where you went up to do that. Mount Diablo? Work. I mean, Mount uh, uh, Tamalpais? Mount Tam. Mount yeah. Tam, yeah. 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 I think Mount Diablo is taller than that, right? Oh, yeah. Well, then, by, yeah the way, by the way, Mark, Matt Sheridan says, Alex, George Lucas does not remember you. Sorry <laughs> to break the news. Uh, let me say this, okay? He probably does know who I was because he lived in the Bay Area, and I was very popular there. Uh, and I, as a matter of fact, worked on the movie. Uh, the only Lucas film that I had anything to do with I hate to admit this, was Howard the Duck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where they asked me at Lucas, uh, could I please uh, get an audience to sit in a theater? Because the closing scene of the movie took place on a stage in uh, a rock concert. And I, so I got them a thousand people into the Warfield Theater at uh, like 10, 9 o'clock in the morning. And so, yes, I think uh, uh, Lucas probably knows who I was, but he didn't really care. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. he, had, he had more important things to do. Yeah. So, well, that's it for tonight. No, we're, right. we're not through yet. <clears throat> I learned something interesting about the uh, trials that are going on for the Oath Keepers. Oh. Their, their, their head, the head of the Oath Keepers, Stuart Rhodes, Used to be a staffer for Rand Paul's father, Ron Paul. Yeah. Really? The well, losers, they always stick together. Wait a minute. Now, who 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 was work with Rand Paul? Stuart Rhodes, who's the head of the Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's only got one good eye. He used to be a staffer for Ron Paul when Ron Paul was a representative from Texas. Ah, yep. okay. All right. So, Rand, Rand Paul's, Paul's father. father. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know, I mean, how come the youth liked Ron, uh, Ron Paul so much during, you know, when uh, I think when he was running for president, uh, it, it, he seemed to have a lot of the youth behind him. Yeah, he was a rebel. <laughs> and his, but he uh, he didn't seem to be that he would be, you know, supporting their causes. But uh, the youth seemed to be enamored with him. Uh, did you yeah. Like it? Yeah. Again today, I saw uh, this guy Walker out of Georgia oh, yeah. speaking. Or let me put it this way. He was speaking, but I couldn't understand a word he was saying. Oh, Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. Guy. Isn't that a little bigoted, you know? Well, or no, it's so not bigoted. Old. If well, I can't understand. Kind of black or yeah. white, he's got brain damage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I feel sorry for him. He played football and he got his brains beaten in. Yeah. Does that mean he has to inflict himself on us? Yes. <laughs> you know, I understand he's a businessman. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Successful. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Who cares? Not really. And and it's just it's just a bunch of people. But trying how, to how's that a qualification? How's that a qualification to be a senator? Well, because he made a payroll, you know, he understands what it's oh, like. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, he's a big business. I bet he had somebody else doing his payroll. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. But, I think uh, you don't think so, I, Phil. I, Phil. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson has more brain. Phil, power. don't yeah. sound stupid. This guy has <laughs> definite brain damage, and he can't put two words together coherently. And Mike and on top of that, he's a bad father he abandoned four of his children has not Ellie. seen them 
One of them was by this woman who he had to have the abortion. He said he never heard of her. How can you not hear of somebody who's the mother of your child? And then he went, well, yeah, I guess I do remember her. I mean, was, lies, like, lies, lies. You remember me. <laughs> Jeff, Phil, we're not you're laughing like about this. I mean, that, this is a guy who's a terrible, horrible human being that goes against every principle of every party. Except you know? that the fact that he is going to vote in lockstep with the Republicans, which uh, how is that a good thing? How's, how, how's, how's that? How's that? Ability, a, how's that a good well, it's thing? It's important because right. if the don't hey people, don't make that a don't make that a selling point to well, these if the Republicans, people. Republicans, if the Republicans can control the Senate, they can stop uh, judicial appointments by uh, Biden. Oh, like and they've they, done a really good job under Trump. Look at all the yahoos they put on the federal bench under Trump. I love the yahoos they put on the federal bench under Trump. Yeah. Do you realize that the Supreme Court now might might uh, 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 implement this state legislature uh, validation that says they cannot be challenged? This theory that state legislatures are ultimate in, in elections, in federal elections, the state legislature cannot be challenged, even if the Constitution says that they can't do it. They can still do it if the Supreme Court decides that this theory has merit. Well, you know, it would have to be constitutional. Don't the states have uh, the the right over the federal for, for their... But you're missing my point, Phil. The legislatures of every state are a creation of that state's constitution. And yeah. if that state's constitution says that you cannot override the popular vote of the people in your state. The legislature, this theory says that the legislature can tell them to go fly a kite and they can send in whatever slate they want to if the Supreme Court validates this stupid theory. Oh, and I thought states had electors. The states, cre the states appoint electors to go to the electoral college. all the electors are true, phil do you know the, do you know the electors each state yeah. determines how you do that phil when you vote for president of the united states who are you voting for in actual republican no no no, no <laughs> phil come on I'm, quit joking quit giving us uh, a joke answer for everything that I you don't have an the, answer for oh yeah. okay you know? well, uh, finish it, your question no, then, uh, yeah who are you voting for when you vote uh, for president, uh, I'm voting for the head of the executive uh, branch. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, people, but you're actually voting for an elector. Yeah, yeah, but that electoral elector. Yeah. It's a, it's but you're voting for an elector. Yeah, that's a representative government, and that's why the elector represents. You're, you're voting for an elector to go to Washington. And to put a vote in, um, your, in other words, there are Republican electors, there are Democratic le electors. Right. And if the Democrat wins, then they send a whole bunch of, of their electors to Washington. Uh, you know, that's the way it should be. Okay? It's not, a, I don't think it's the way it should be, actually. I think that I make a vote, it should be registered as one vote in Washington, and that's it. You just yeah. want popular vote. I want popular vote. I don't want, uh, you know. Okay, this is called this is called the independent state legislature theory, and it says that the the districts uh, the district draws and things like that that the legislature does cannot be overridden by a state supreme court's interpretation of that state's own constitution, including any provisions limiting gerrymandering. Uh, it's independent state my legislature theory. There's a case from Alabama going to the Supreme Court this term. Interesting. Uh, but I'm very happy with the three yahoos that Trump put on the court. And uh, I'm also happy with Clarence Thomas. You happy with uh, you happy with the uh, the uh, Roe versus Wade thing? Uh, I. Well, that, because I'm that's not for it, abortion. What, no, but it, uh, nobody, nobody says you have to be. It, it's if somebody wants one, right. they can get one. That's what it's all about. Not whether you like it or not. 
you know, why you get can't it the people in a state uh, determine uh, what what they want and don't want? Well, should a uh, state determine civil rights, Phil? Well, I don't feel it's a civil right to We're get one country, country, though. We're one country, and this states' rights thing also is being played up in the South that the state should be able to determine whether or not civil rights is a federal issue. Yeah. Hmm. Why should what like rights Roe you have depend on where you live? Well, you, you can take anything to court, and you know then there'll be a decision. Now, they made a decision 50 years ago on uh, Roe versus Wade, and now it's been overturned. Uh, and yeah, but it, it was overturned on some jack leg thing that happened back in the 13th century, Phil. Yeah. It made no sense. You like the Magna Carta. Yeah. It wasn't the Magna Carta. It was the Visa Carta. By the way, uh, everybody have a drink. Phil said it was the Magna Carta. <laughs> uh, you mean the Magna Carta wasn't from the 13th century? <laughs> no, it, the, the, what Alito referred to was not the Magna Carta. It was, some it was, it was something in the 1800s. Yeah. 13, so 18, 1800s. He's a little confused. What? When was it? It was the 1300s. Oh, really? Yeah, way back in the Middle Ages. The Dark Ages, actually. That's what he's using to control women's bodies today. And they're trying to make it seem like it's a Christian act to ban abortions. It's not, it, it, maybe, it, maybe Christ, some Christians, I'm not saying all Christians, maybe some Christians believe that life begins at conception, and they have every right to have that religious belief. But Jews don't believe that. Jews don't believe it. In fact, Jews believe that the mother has the right to do with that child what she wants until it's born. Yeah. What if it's not a religious thing? What if it's just a matter of protecting life? No, what they're no, doing is a religious, religious thing. thing. What they're it's doing is they are rejecting. life begin. It's a religious belief about when life begins. Yeah. And they're going yeah. against Human they're going begins. against Jews by by uh, voting as they have. Yeah. Maybe the Jews are wrong. You know, Phil, uh, Phil, why do you why do you come up with stupid answers to life, an argument? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if that yeah, tell all those women who can't get abortions can't, now their yeah. pursuit of happiness. Yeah, let them go and have their pursuit of happiness. Oh, I, that ten-year-old girl that got raped and it got pregnant. There's always an exception. There's always an exception to the rule, Charles. No, no, no. They no, don't want exceptions. No, they don't want exceptions. No, no, no. no, 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 no talking if about the Republicans take control of the House and Senate. They will pass a bill, and, and, and Biden will have to veto it, that says that life begins at conception. There are no exceptions for abortions. They've already said they're going to do that. Mitch McConnell has already said that's what he would do. So that's yeah. really the reason we all have to go out and vote and get rid of these yeah. assholes. You know? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's terrible. It's terrible what's happening in this country. I'll tell you. I wish I were younger. I'd be out of here so fast and make you'd see my shadow would still be here. You know, I mean, it's 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 ridiculous, just ridiculous. Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen was on uh, one of the shows this afternoon, mm -hmm. and he was asked the question, "Well, what if Trump gets reelected in 2024?" He said, "I've already made plans. I'm on the hit list. I've got to leave the country." He's afraid that if uh, Trump gets reelected, that Trump will go after him. Right. Mm -hmm. Trump will. And he will. He goes after everybody that goes against And him. you're not allowed to use your post as president of the United States to do that at all. Anyway, listen, we've run out of time. <laughs> Boy, I managed to shut up Phil fast enough before he went to another. Good luck. Uh, yeah, I know. I know, Brian. <laughs> Isn't it horrible? Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Phil, for being here. Uh, <laughs> and thank you, Jeff, Bye. for being here. Thank you, Bye. Charlie, for being there. Uh, thank you, Vernon. We always love seeing you. Brian, great to see you on the mend from your being sick last week. And, of course, Alan, big wave goodbye, Alan. Thank you. Everybody, wave goodbye. I'll wave goodbye, too, right? Okay? And say goodnight to all of you. Hey, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of this same gab net, and he will be doing a show here. Uh, and taking your calls, okay? He'll be using Skype, and uh, it's Gabnet Live is the Skype address. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night, right back here, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? 
Bye-bye, everybody.